sometimes I look weird. But anyway, welcome back. <laughs> it has been almost an entire year. And honestly, my only excuse for that is that I have not been writing. I have not been writing up until like recently, like literally this month. But anyway, it is. I'm sorry, there's like a storm happening outside in California. Like, and the door is doing the most. Also, I taped over my school's name because safety. Anyway, here I go. First question. I feel like I have no time for anything in my life this year. I'm doing it right now. It's, it's honestly going really well. The first few days, I was like 5,000 words behind, but I caught up and now I'm ahead and I'm having a lot of something really gross in my sweatshirt. I'm having a lot of fun writing, which is cool. I think that this draft is like gonna be it. Like the, the like where I, how I, okay, let me explain real quick. This is my third draft of this story, but the first two drafts literally are like completely different. Like there are different characters. Some of the characters like didn't even exist back then. And it's just so weird because it's changed so much, but it's technically the same story. And I'm just like so confused. I'm like, does this happen to other people? Because I thought when you like were revising that you were just taking the same story and just switching things up, you know, but it was the same backbone. But now it's like, no, I feel like I'm really solid in the story. So I feel like it's not going to change that much for the next draft, but we'll see because that's what I thought last time. So last year for NaNoWriMo, I won on November 15th, which is literally halfway through the month. Oh, I must have been on crack. Like I. How did I write that fast? Now I specifically remember I would like sit down and I would write like 5,000 words at a time and this is just not it. Well I've been writing like on average like 1,700 like 2,000 words. Maybe I can finish during Thanksgiving break. That'd be cool. Mm -hmm. It's literally the only tip I have is to write every day. I don't really pay attention to how many words I write per minute or per hour. I just write. <laughs> it usually, I would say it takes me like, if I'm like sitting there for like an hour or two, I can get like a lot of writing in. But usually only if I'm in the group. Because if, it, if I feel like I'm like forcing words out of me, then it's gonna go way slower. But when I have on a good song, you know, I have a writing playlist, I would 10 out of 10 recommend doing that. I get so much done. Like honestly, I don't know any tips other than just really helps to really really love your story and me personally I do outlines so that helps because I know what I'm writing next but I don't know it's different for, for me that's what works I'm the biggest mess honestly if I can win in a I feel like anyone can because I am just so I don't even know how to describe it but just know that me the most anxious messy i would say disorganized but honestly i'm not that disorganized i say messy in terms of like just me being scatterbrained but if i can do it literally anyone can i fully believe that in my mind so you have no excuses you should have won in a by now mm -hmm. honestly the answer is fantasy for both I haven't really been enjoying reading fantasy lately. I think it's because, I don't know, I'm just really picky about that because I don't know why. But I watched Game of Thrones this year and that was like the height of fantasy. I feel like it just won't get better. <laughs> I, I love to write literally any genre, read any genre, but my favorite is usually fantasy. I don't know why I just haven't been into it recently because I the, the YA fantasy books that I have, like they're not great and then the adult fantasy books that I have it's like too much like I can't I cannot commit to a George R. R. Martin book right now I just can't it's too much but <laughs> the way fantasy that I have is not enough yeah Game of Thrones kind of ruined fantasy for me because I feel like if it's if it's just not up to par with Game of Thrones it's just not good I don't know I'm, I'm so sorry <laughs> this year I could literally probably count on one hand or maybe two hands not counting the books that I read for class actually yes counting the books that I read for class the girl on the train chose no blood and bone reaper at the gates beloved which was a reread passing which was a reread citizen the wrath and the dawn parable of the sower and the night circuit I might have read more I'm not sure <laughs> Girl 
the Train was my favorite because, I don't know, it was, it's kind of like a psychological thriller and that's like my favorite movie genre and so to read that, I haven't read many thrillers but it was really good and it was like a super thick, quick, it was a super quick read. <laughs> It's fantasy. Oh. I almost dropped my notebook. I'm just gonna read you what it says in my notes. <laughs> it's freaking awesome. That's what it says. Yeah, no, I'm really excited about it because I feel like this draft is the one that has like solidified the story and the characters, so that's cool. It has two point of views. It's in third person. Yeah, right now because I'm worried I'm more focused on like getting actual words on for NaNoWriMo, I feel like my actual writing sucks and I'm not as in the flow with you know, my writing and, you know, world building and also just in the head of my characters as much as I would love to be, but I know that that will change. What am I mad about today? A lot of things. When I wrote this, this was like a week ago, but a lot of things, like my anxiety is really bad, my mental health has not been, has not been great. Chemistry is always stressing me out, it's really frustrating for me. Men. Do I need to elaborate on that? I don't think so. My lack of reading, my writing, it's just not what I want, where I want it to be. I was on Twitter today and there was this whole argument about like, how people don't actually like not like YA, like they don't actually dislike YA, they just love to hate on teenagers and teenage girls more specifically. And that has been my theory for the longest time. I could go on about that forever like honestly i could do an entire ted talk on that topic so i'm not even talking about it too much now but that is mostly what i'm mad about today like i've just been talking a lot also just the fact that people on the internet they don't like to read like people's attention spans are getting so bad nowadays and there will be like a freaking you know like how the celebrities do like you know app apologies and the people in the comments are like i'm not reading all of that and i'm like it's literally like a minute of your time like you spend three hours on social media but like since people nowadays are just used to reading like i don't know how long tweets are like 200 words they're used to just reading tweets and you know captions even if a caption is like more than a few words we're like not reading that and i'm like that's why people are like how do you have the attention span for reading like how do you have the patience and i'm like how do you have the freaking patience for anything reading is an essential part of life and if you cannot sit there for more than 30 seconds to read something like Honestly, that's just really concerning to me, and it is sad. Short answer, I don't, <laughs> because it obviously takes over my life. Sometimes I'll feel anxious for like no reason. Obviously there's a reason, but like, I literally will just like wake up having an anxiety attack, and it's like, I don't know why. Like that's, I don't know what triggers that, but like things that I can pinpoint that I know, you know, I would feel anxious when I'm in that situation is school, specifically, you know, a test or, you know, just in chem class, like, we have pop quizzes. You can kind of tell when they're coming, but, like, for the most part, it's, like, I don't know, and it's really stressful for me to be in class and, like, participating in class. Like, it makes me feel physically ill, and it's the freaking worst, and it's gotten so bad this year, and I remember in high school, not high school, well, high school, beginning of high school and end of middle school, that was like when it was at its peak, my anxiety in school. I would go home so much. Like I missed a lot of school because I just I could not handle being in a classroom at the time. I didn't know like what anxiety was. I didn't know that that's what I was struggling with. And so I was like, oh, I'm just sick. When in reality, it's like, no, because I would go home and I would feel fine. But then I remember one day I told my dad, I was like, hey, like I think I have anxiety. I like had an anxiety attack. He's like, you don't have anxiety. Like that's no. And I was like, okay, yeah, you're a doctor. Like makes sense after that it kind of you know wasn't as bad now my social anxiety is really bad like i don't want to go out i don't you know when new people come into our apartment or when we have to hang out with people i don't know it's like i literally just i can't i go out i try and then the thing is like i'll stay in because i don't want to feel anxious around people when i go out but then i feel sad because i'm so isolated and i just am sad all the time but then when i go out i feel sad because i feel like people don't want to talk to me because i'm not talking to them because i'm so nervous 
and then I feel depressed <laughs> and it's just this whole cycle. My anxiety will infiltrate my dreams like in my dream I'll be like wow I feel really shitty and then I'll wake up and I'll be like oh it, that's why I feel shitty because I'm having a freaking anxiety attack. And also just the other weekend I was in the shower and I had a panic attack. I'm not even kidding you guys I thought I was having a stroke or an aneurysm. My entire body felt like it was just gonna like collapse. I didn't know what was happening. I had to get out of this. It was really scary, but I don't know what caused that one either. It was so random. Short answer, I really don't manage it. I've been going to therapy and I actually canceled my therapy impulsively, even though it was helping me, kind of, but like not really. I don't know. Um, but basically, I need to go to a doctor because it's just getting to the point where it's like, I, I can't. It's so bad. I try and, you know, do like breathing exercises and mindfulness for like more like tangible ways to get rid of the like symptoms obviously i don't want to go to class and feel like i'm dying you know, i want to be able to go out with my friends and have a good time but it's really hard and, like at this point i don't know I, I give myself like little positive affirmations i'm like hey like you know that this is going to be hard but, like you've been going through a lot you know it's okay to feel sad and to feel anxious sometimes but you know it doesn't have it doesn't it's not the end of the world like you've been through this and you came out on the other side and you were fine so like this is not going to kill you because the main thing with anxiety is that it's trying to tell you that you're in danger but like when i'm sitting in a classroom i'm not in danger like it's ridiculous it's just my mind overthinks everything and i'm talking really fast right now because i'm nervous and it just happens but yeah that's pretty much it <laughs> i'm just like word vomit and everything but that's all i have to say thanks for listening hope you could understand my fast talking and i will see you next time so bye